My name is Jane Goodall, my age is 80. My job is giving people hope. I learned from my mother so much. The importance, I think, of, of support. Because when I was a child, my mother supported all my crazy love of animals. When I wanted to go off to Africa, age 10, and everybody laughed at me, she supported me. And she simply said, which I took to heart and repeat again and again, that if you really want something, you have to be prepared to work very hard, take advantage of opportunity, and above all, never give up. In my life I, right now, I'm 80. There is so much left to do. So I would like to, I would like to go back and give myself a bit longer. But as it is, I don't know how long I have to live, but but certainly it is that every year takes me closer to the end, whenever that end is. And so there's this feeling of, of desperation. There's so many places I want to go. There's so many people I want to talk to. There's so many hearts I want to reach. And I'm just me and I try and use this electronic stuff and it does work to a certain extent, but it's not the same as being there and sensing a person and trying to get in here where it seems impossible to do. Education is not the sort of education that we think about when children go to school. I think education is learning from experience. I think we continue to be educated throughout life. And I think every day brings its own kind of, of education and we can learn from it. If we keep our eyes open, our ears open, and think of every day as an adventure, then each day will give us a lesson. I have many kinds of happiness. I'm completely happy when I'm alone in nature. I love to be alone in nature. It makes me very happy. I'm really happy when I sit around with friends in the evening, particularly around a campfire, and we can tell stories and drink a bit of red wine. I'm totally happy when I'm walking with a dog, because dogs make me really, really happy, because you can just be yourself with a dog, and a dog is always him, herself, or herself with me. And when I was a child, my great teacher was a dog, a dog who taught me that we're just part of the animal kingdom and that we're not the only beings with personalities and minds capable of reasoning and certainly not the only beings with emotions like happiness, sadness, fear, despair, nor are we the only beings capable of giving and receiving love. The biggest problem that we have as environmental activists is to fight the power of money because there's absolutely no question. There are people in government who truly agree. When I talk with them, they agree that this mine shouldn't go ahead or that dam shouldn't be built or um, Monsanto shouldn't be allowed to test its seeds here. But, but when this, uh, it's corruption really, but the might of money, the corporations that hold governments in their hands because of lobbying power and so forth. It's, it's really frightening. If I'm allowed to change a few things, uh, if I just have this magic power, I would like to, without causing any pain or suffering, reduce the number of people on the planet because there's too many of us. It's a planet of finite resources and we're using them up. And that's going to mean so much suffering in the future. I would like to alleviate poverty because when you're poor, never mind the individual suffering, you're destroying the environment because you have to. You have to cut down the last trees to try and grow a bit of food to feed yourself and your family or to make some charcoal. Or you have to buy the cheapest food, even if that did cause horrendous suffering to animals or child slave labor somewhere else. So alleviate poverty. And maybe the hardest of all, but what I really, really, really would love to change is the unsustainable lifestyle of everybody else. We just greedy. And I always think of Mahatma Gandhi saying, this planet can provide for human need, but not for human greed. And that is so right.